Yeah, so filming. Yeah, everybody who has been in the UR knows Emma. I want to show you Emma because I'm going to say goodbye to Emma for this season um, very soon. Because um, you see Emma, this is Emma. It's a rocket stove made by Fanglor Kesselbau and um, the maker Claudius generously provided Emma to me um, over three years ago, free of charge, uh, in return for testing numbers, temperatures, wood consumption, um, feedback experiences. And yeah, well, one feedback, like, first of all, I'm like really grateful for Claudius. Thank you, Claudius, if you see this. Um, contribution to this whole Nomad Town Resilience Hub project and to this experiment um, or uh, idea of going off-grid in the subarctic. Um, so here is Emma burning away and there is a big big pot of soup uh, in the pressure cooker and the fan is distributing air nicely. So like overall i'm extremely excited how how well emma is suitable for this yurt so i'm um, like not saying this because i got emma for free but simply because it's like you know i i couldn't wish for a better stove like to have had in the last three winters with outside temperatures of going down to minus 34. um very lucky i got with getting this stove pipe insulated stove pipe with this uh, 50 liter water tank. Uh, I just started Emma not long ago, so usually the temperature stays around 40, doesn't go much over 50. Um, so that's just my warm water. And I'm, I just got very lucky that it really fits so nicely To I just needed this adapter piece here to, to fit the diameters, but it's roughly good. So um, yeah, I want to share some, some uh, special things about Emma. Uh, there's the firewood supply. In the coldest days it takes uh, 15 to 18 kilos of this. Um, altogether I get to, um, including sauna, space heating, cooking and warm water for laundry and washing myself, I get to um, about one cubic meter um, piled um, cubic of uh, birch wood which to my understanding is containing roughly 1500 kilowatt hours so um yeah maybe not that little but then again compared to other housing and shelter types really really little um and it's wood from the neighborhood so uh, like almost co2 neutral yeah so some special tricks about emma i want to share like this I made, I added to be able to hold this handle without gloves. Just you know, took some wire, wound it around a broomstick to get it into this shape. And then I threaded it around the handle. So really easy. Um, and then like, yeah, the, the nowadays kind of over the years, the door has become, this is getting hot usually, but the door is a bit loose. So I can't get it as airtight anymore as in the beginning. Um, also, some insulation has come out, like, um, I might open this for a moment so you can see the, no, you don't really see how the burning chamber has warped, but you can see that it's like metal on the inside. Um, and just to remind, this is the first version of the Emma, so in the newer version that has been changed, this has been like there were lessons learned so this is an issue that i had to deal with but if you buy an emma nowadays you wouldn't have to deal with this anymore so um yeah there i feel there wasn't much to be improved on this stove and what could be improved uh to my understanding in the no production model of the emma has been improved so yeah there's not much else to say um i mean like it, I would find it difficult to give good instructions on how to use the Emma. 
because it's like really I wouldn't say she lives a life on her own but of course she has her own tweaks and you see like how everything is set up around here so I'm drying eggshells here and like I'm making powder of those and this is like in the coffee mill so I'm making powder of this and that's a to be thrown in the food get some calcium yeah I'm drying some some nettles already even though it's like yeah it's the kind of the purple baby nettles some saga <laughs> and some um, mouse skins <laughs> so yeah um, but yeah I'm surprised how, how well it works to get through through the year through the winter with this also cooking wise like having the pressure cooker and cast iron you can easily set things aside for some time cover them to to kind of keep the boiling process going um, or the cooking process even though it's not on the stove especially with the pressure cooker yeah pressure cooker is a really good thing to have in the yurt because you can carry the steam out so it's really nice one okay that was basically it um, little feedback update on the Emma the working horse here that really makes it uh, makes a huge difference I mean there are many stoves out there um, that are very capable of um, you know providing heat for winter life and also there's like options of implementing solar for the heating uh, to some extent uh, which I'm actually exploring in the moment a little bit but anyhow the season is basically over because it's getting too warm in the yurt for cooking with the stove so that's why the summer kitchen is like calling and it's yeah second of may and we've been making food outside already so yeah looking forward to the time of the summer kitchen so retiring emma for this season now i think with this last big big pot of soup <laughs> have a good time everyone take care bye bye